Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio and today we are painting the Herald of Nurgle from Forge World. Now this is a very interesting little kit. Um, what I found though, as it's not ours, it was donated to us uh, by one of our fans. There is green stuff around the bottom of this one and I decided not to remove that when we got the model. Um, it would, I thought I'd make it look more like a slug and try and make that look like some slime. So we'll be doing that later on as well. I'm going to follow that entire slug theme. Uh, in England, we used to have a lot of black slugs, then black and yellow slugs. Now we've just got these weird off-green slug sort of colours, so that's what I'm going to go with. We've started the model with a black prime, as always, and then we're going to use Death World Forest by Games Workshop. This is uh, very thin, as you can tell, and we're going to do uh, a few layers of this, just till we get a nice, solid, yellowy-green coat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix 60% Death World Forest with 40% Baylor Brown, both Games Workshop colours. I'm going to start highlighting the entire back, not just the raised areas, because this is going to be a colour transition, uh, not a highlight. So I want it to be grey black towards the bottom of the model and a yellowy green towards the top and then more yellow at the very back. So I'm going to glaze that up uh, in a few layers until we get a uh, good solid Baylor brown sort of mix at the top. After that we're going to switch that around now and we're going to do 60% Baylor brown and 40% Death World Forest and just highlight that top even more. Remember we're getting in the grooves there as well because this is a colour transition and it's not a shade. As you can see we've got this um, very nasty slug sort of colour scheme going on already uh, which I was quite happy with at this point. Later on in the video um, I make a couple of bad decisions on the paint job but we'll get to those um, and I'll tell you what I would have done instead in the summary at the end. Now we're going to add a Thonian camo shade by Games Workshop with medium and we're going to cover the majority of the model in that. I do believe it's all of the model. Uh, that's just going to help us blend the Death World Forest Bale or Brown combinations all together and add that little bit of green that we've lost into the deeper recesses since we've lost all of our definition. And this will be the first bit of definition that we've put in there. I've obviously mixed this with medium because I like to keep in control of my washers and you don't want to drown the model in it. Now while I'm letting that dry I decided to go for Nagaroth Knight as the scarf head thing. Cowl, I think would be the right term. Uh, that's going to take a couple of layers as well. The reason I went for a purpley colour is it's uh, quite complementary to the greens and it also contrasts with yellow. So I thought it'd be interesting to put it into that palette. Now just be careful you don't get it on the work that you've previously done. After that I'm going to use Null Oil and Lamiant Medium and we're going to start working towards the bottom of the model about halfway up the model and we're going to start working from the midsection down to the bottom half making it darker in the recesses. This bit here was a bit of an experiment, um, I just wanted to darken that down because later on we're going to try and paint some slime effects in there. Which came out okay but uh, I'll tell you how to add even more depth to them later on. So after that I'm going back to my Baylor Brown and Death World Forest mix. The same consistency that we had last time, so we're looking at 60% Baylor Brown, 40% Death World Forest. And now we're going to start using that to highlight. We've put the Athonian camo shade in those recesses, so that's darkened it down. And we're basically just bringing that colour on the raised areas back up again. Ever so gently, doing lots and lots of very thin layers. Although we can see that my paint isn't as thin as I uh, would have liked it to have been. So now we've got a bit of definition in the shape there. After that, we're going to be using German Grey by Model Colour. I decided to just paint this slime effect at the bottom straight in with this colour. Now, what I don't do later on, which I should have done in hindsight, is paint this all the way up the front of the torso as well. Uh, and then blend that into the centre of the torso all the way up. It would have given a much better finish at the end, so I would recommend doing that. We'll keep it really really thin and just glaze that into the chest center or the center of the chest 
We're going to be using this colour in combination with light grey by model colour as well. Uh, as you can see, this front section, if you had done the German grey, you could start highlighting um, it up with the light grey now, giving it um, a very slimy look. But as you can see, I'm experimenting here and just doing very thin layers over the greens that we've already got. It does give sort of a glossy... Um, texture to the uh, model and you can see the greens from underneath it as well so it looks like there's a layer of slime over it um, it does work pretty well um, I could probably use some more practice at painting things so they look slightly transparent but uh, I'm gonna keep trying with that and uh, see if I can crack it and after that I decided I'd pick up some of the yellows on the front and the other highlights at the back again with sand yellow by Model Air mixed into our Baylor Brown and Death, Death World mix. And uh, I just started using that to highlight the, the bumps even further. And especially the bits at the back, as uh, they've got a lot of definition to them. And if you follow them all the way around that tail area, uh, they'll stand out on the table from a distance and look really nice. Maybe nice isn't the right word, as it's Nurgle. Now we're just going to add even more sand yellow. So we're slowly going away from that yellow and what we're doing, the bale or brown sort of colour and highlighting it up to a bit more of a muted colour so it looks like highlights because you don't want to keep going to a brighter yellow, you end up with like some fluorescent yellow sort of effect on there and that's not what you want for Nurgle, that's more of a slanesh thing. Now I'm going to use Null Oil, very very thin. Now that big section there that is also uh, that you can see that I'm washing around, that is the light grey by model colour as well. But uh, the null oil that's very thin, we're going to start working again from the mid section um, to the bottom. And making sure we uh, paint it into those grooves there to add even more definition and more shape to what we've previously done. It is a fun little figure this one, um, it's full of character. And again, I just muck, I'm just mucking about with a paint palette. So what I've used here is Sunny Skin Tone by Model Air, very very thin, and I've started trying to work that towards the edges of this uh, raised area. I wanted a little bit of that grey to show through, but uh, it didn't come out quite the way I wanted, so I ended up painting the whole thing in Sunny Skin Tone, and uh, started filling in all those other wounds with Sunny Skin Tone as well, because I wanted it to look. Um, I was looking up images on Google of uh, slugs that have popped and. They tend to have quite a, a light colour coming out of them, but uh, it was far too bright in comparison to everything else. So I decided I'd put some veins on this like you would do an eyeball, so maybe it's like some sac, uh, pus sac or something, and I'm using Squig Orange by Games Workshop for that, and a Winsor Newton Series 7 to draw really fine veins on this uh, raised area, which I'm hoping you can see on the camera when this video is exported and uploaded. But um, if not, I apologise for that. Now, do take your time with this and just make a, a lot of those shapes. And then what we're going to do is go over those, well, over the whole section there with Lamentus Yellow, very watered down. That's going to blend the Squig Orange into the Sunny Skin Tone by Model Air. And uh, even if you put on that uh, Squig Orange quite stark, you're going to be able to tone it together and make it look like part of the same pustule, part of the same material so it's sort of in there rather than on top of it. Then I want to highlight the lower sections of those veins and the outer edge of this now with Wild Rider Red leaving some of the squig orange showing through at the top so that way your veins start off um, nice dark and fat and get very very thin. Again Winsor Newton Series 7 uh, because he's got such excellent bristle control um, it makes this job a lot easier and I'm going to continue this with all the holes and pustules as you can see it's starting to show up on camera now uh, as I did another layer of Lamentus Yellow on there as well and it's back to a null oil wash very very thin uh, as I was mucking around with this grey area at the front um, looking back in hindsight I would have preferred to keep that sort of grey slime um, for the pustules but it's just a preference thing. And one of these days we're going to get chairs that don't creak on the audio um, every time we're shooting a video. 
So, uh, the Nurglings, I decided to do different to the Herald, as, um, well, they wouldn't stand out very much otherwise, so I started with a, a Strachan Green. And I can't remember what base there was, I think they just got painted the same as everything else, but we're going to build up a different colour combination now to make them stand out. I don't really like the sculpt on these little Nurglings, I couldn't really get my br brush in there to uh, pick out some of the parts that I wanted. It was a bit of a pain. Then I'm going to highlight those with just um, Nurgling Green by Games Workshop. Surprise, surprise, as we're painting Nurglings. But I just wanted to make their skin a little paler so they stand out and you can see that the Herald's actually carrying them with him. Uh, this has been the first model I've painted since uh, just before the holiday season as well, so everything on it feels a little bit sloppy for me. Um, hopefully the next video I will be doing a lot better. Um, Demonette Hide is then used to highlight the hood. I'm going to cover nearly all of the model. I'm going to do this in sort of a Games Workshop fashion to start off with and just leave in dark areas and the recesses. That's just to get a good colour contrast and uh, bring in the depth on that hood. So I want some nice dark recesses on there. Now for the arm, I started with Model Air Metallic's Copper, but later on I go over this again, so uh, and, uh, what's happened is Model Air Met Metallic Copper is being used as a base coat for this. Um, you don't need to paint the entire arm, I just decided to do the bits that look like some form of extra armour, and uh, later on we'll do the other parts in a different metallic colour, because you want to break that up. But the idea was to get this colour quite a warm dark warm reddish copper um, to complement the greens and yellows as well and I'm back to Baylor Brown and Death World Forest because we have, have put a wash over these so I just wanted to pick some of that back out again I did find that uh, it was quite hard to get those uh, recesses to stay the right sort of contrast between the recesses and the highlights I was doing while, while using so many washes and I'm going to do this all the way around the uh, the model again. Sorry, no, that was just straight Baylor on its own. Now, now straight Baylor on its own. Um, just at the chest sections mainly. Um, the rest of those grooves are pretty, um, pretty much done. All those raised areas are highlighted enough, but this is really, really thin, so I'm just picking out the very tips of these highlights. Next up, I'm going back to Light Grey by Model Air, and I'm actually going to start painting in weird patterns onto the um, flesh area, well, onto this bit that was actually green stuff at some point that someone had left on there. I'm going to highlight the edges of it first uh, to give me some definition so I can see the colour contrast. And I'm going to start painting this up into the green areas and into the black areas. But you want to put them at an angle so it looks like the herald is moving forward. So you want to start from the front and pull the streaks at a diagonal angle backwards on both sides. So that way when we're done it will look like it's uh, pushing forward through all the slime. Next is Model Air Metallic Rust to go over that copper that we did. Um, sort of a colour change, but the copper did work as a nice base coat and I did get to the colour that I was hoping to get to by the end of it. As you can see, I've left those other black parts there because they're going to be a silver and that's going to help break the model up. And the other metallic parts I just decided to go with model air metallic gunmetal I could have gone with black metal but that would have been too dark for this particular project he's got quite a lot of color on him um, so the gunmetal is the next one up if you haven't got gunmetal you can use lead belcher by games workshop it's similar enough for you to get away with it and just be careful as always not to get the uh, paint anywhere you don't want it Now I'm switching to some scale 75 paints and this is El Dandil Violet, although I'd recommend not using this one as um, 
it enriched that hood a little bit more than I wanted. I should have gone with a purple with a little less color in, a little less color in it and a bit more dark. Um, Nagaroth Knight maybe, or one of the other scale 75s that are a bit darker than this because they have some very nice muted paints. But what I'm doing here is uh, using that as a wash almost, uh, just to bring even more color and depth into that hood. Munfang Brown is then going to be used as a wash over all the metallic arm parts. You may have seen me do this before on one of the Orc videos. It's very, very thin. And what that's going to do is it's going to enrich those coppers and it's also going to put some extra tones and details into those metallic silver parts that we've done and just stop them looking bright silver. Um, Morning Fang Brown is great for a rusted sort of look. As long as you keep it watered down and work it up in layers, you should be absolutely fine with that. Then Reclam Flesh Shade is added on all the brass. And I think that's just the brass and not the silver work. That's going to enrich the recesses even further. Now we've got this very bizarre copper Munfang rust effect over the top. Uh, we just want some depth in there now. Now this model is getting an oil wash, so I'm not putting in too much depth on these parts. I mean a pin wash, uh, not an oil wash. Now, Scale 75's Brain Eater, which is a weird name for a colour, but there you go. Um, I really do like the scale 75 set that's going to be used to start glazing up now we're going to glaze up from the base of the hood to the top and those top parts we want them really pronounced because it's got a nice shape to it I'm using a wet palette for this obviously to keep my paint really really wet but that does mean that it takes a lot of time to get that to blend and then you have to have the patience to let each layer dry as you go now we're going to use Lendris Grey with a bit of Berenia. Lendris Grey, both scale 75. And we're going to start bringing that up again. Um, you're looking at about a third now of the highlights is going to be in this colour. A third to a quarter. And as you can see, we've gone from a purple and it should start toning now to a, a pale sort of grey colour. And this is why I didn't like the uh, violet that I used before. It, enriched it made the base color a little bit too red for my liking um, could have used something a bit more black and uh, would have looked better now I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of Drusia Violet and no oil and that was to try and fix that problem because I wasn't happy with that so I was trying to tone down those reddish purples that are on, on the base again you want to be really careful when working with these washers you don't want to drown your model you basically want to paint this in um, let it dry then come back and do another layer that way you can keep really in control of where each bit of the wash goes and how deep it is how rich it is now I'm going to use dark rust by Panzer Aces to start picking out the horn um, one of the reasons I did this was because I'm always using the Morn Fang Zandri Dust combination or one of the others so I just thought I'd try something ever so slightly different Plus I wanted more of a muted, dry, pasty look for the horn, and that would add contrast to the rest of the model. And after that, we're going to start glazing that up from the base to the top using Steel Legion Drab by Games Workshop. As you can see, that paint that there is very, very thin. <coughs> that paint there is very thin. And... Um, just taking my time glazing that up, I'll let that dry, do another layer, that way you get a nice dark transition from the top to a nice light transition. The details within this horn are actually very very tight for small gaps, so instead of trying to put washes in there, I will probably end up putting mainly an oil wash in so I can push that into the gaps to add that depth. Now I'm going to use Carrick Stone to start highlighting that as well. Uh, again, glazing that up with almost a wash consistency and just taking your time. Starting from about halfway down uh, to the top. And after many layers it starts to show up and you can really see a transition coming along. It's all about patience really. 
And then I'm going to actually wash it down with an army paint a strong tone. And the reason we're going to put the wash on, even though I said we weren't going to, is that's just going to help blend those two, three colours all together. And any brush strokes, or not brush strokes, any blending that didn't go quite right is going to help mute that and uh, tone them together so it's not as noticeable. I'd start from the top of the horn and then pull down that way so most of your wash ends up down near the bottom. So obviously you want your, your top of your horn nice and clean this time. Then I'm going to put Army Paint a strong tone into the wounds as well while I'm at it. I thought it's in the palette now. Maybe this will help take away some of that bright, bright yellow that we've got and uh, give it a much more dirty look. But uh, I'm working it around the outside edges of all these wounds. And that's just to help add a little bit of definition and a bit more depth. And really make these uh, wounds and bits that are popping out look like they're popping out from somewhere more shaded. I started carrying on the pattern that I'd done in the other parts to the front because I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. I was going to leave it grey. Like I said, if you used the model air grey from the beginning and went all the way up the front so it matched the slime at the back, uh, that would have been the better way to do that. But uh, basically I end up, I was just showing you that because I end up um, copying the other techniques on the front part there. Now Rakarth Flesh is used as I think the final highlight for the horn on the top quarter. And there is enough definition on these horns to follow that groove there that goes, runs through the center and uh, highlight those a little bit. Uh, that way you're going to accentuate that little crack that's in the horn as well and give it a bit more depth. Next up, I'm going to be using a Thonian Camo Shade. And I'm going to be using that on the Nurglings because they've not had that much done to them at this point. Um, it's a pretty simple wash, but you're going to be careful not to uh, get it on the hood that you've been working on. As um, it's hard to tell where the definition between the Nurglings and the hood is back there. Um, they are really awkward because of the way that's sculpted. Uh, I could have done a much better job if I had took more time on these. I was really focused on the uh, slug effects and that sort of concept rather than the uh, other details. Now for the warts, we're going to use Model Air Grey. Um, it's on the palette, it seems to work, so I thought we'd use that as a base for all the wart areas. Uh, you don't want to put this on too hard, you want to start from the base of the wart and pull that up. And then what we're going to do is clean off a little bit of that paint and start feathering that grey out back into the green. And because we've got the greys at the back of the model, it will also blend and it won't look it won't look out of place blending that into the greens. Next is Scale 75's Undead Flesh. And what I'm doing here is I'm using that to start picking out what I think is the maggots. Yes. Um, some nice colours there from uh, Scale 75. I just like the uh, really muted stuff and they have a lot of variety of any colour but muted versions of it. So It's one I intend on buying a lot more. Now, beige by model colour is going to be used to pick out the tops of the warts. Because beige was also used in all of those wounds so it won't look too out of place. We've got hints of it there on the palette already. I uh, wanted the warts to stand out, but not stand out too much. Next on the, I believe it's the maggots, is Hellhound Flesh, another scale 75 paint. And what we're going to do is just, where the maggots have the tiny lines across them, we're just going to miss those and do what we did with the with the Herald and just paint those highlighted areas in that across the backs uh, just to give them a bit more detail but I won't need to do much more than that because when I put a uh, pin wash in there it should travel into those little grooves and add even more definition. Model Air Metallic Steel is what I'm going to be using to uh, highlight the metallic parts which is one I find myself highlighting any metallic part with that's the copper and the other steels. And it looks a bit vibrant at the moment, but um, we've got more to do to this. And I just think it stands out enough to give you a nice sharp edge. 
but it can be it's a lighter color so it can be easily toned with a wash and brought right back down or even have colored filters added into it so I do find that's a really good color for highlighting metallics Nurgling green I believe uh, as we've already put a wash on the Nurglings with the Ethonian camo shade I'm going to pick those back out again with Nurgling green and we really wasn't happy with the end result of the faces I wish I took a bit more time on those it's very easy to clog up the details on the Nurgling faces after that we're going to use Null Oil and uh, start washing all those silver parts because they've been quite bright up until now this is also oh no we are doing the copper as well I believe the whole arm is now getting a tone yeah so the whole arm is getting done in null oil uh, very thin wash you don't definitely do not want to drown this because we've got more washes to come on later on so just a nice hint of a dark shade Agrax Earthshade Wash is then going to be used. Yeah, the Agrax Earthshade Wash is going to be used on the Nurglings as well, just to make them look a little bit more dirty, so they match the brown colours and everything else, they don't look too out of place. They did look quite pasty and uh, bright compared to everything else, so a little bit of dirt on them, that's going to help them blend in. Now I'm going to use Light Grey by Model Air again, and this time I'm going to start glazing. And you can see the effect picking up, which is why I picked this bit of footage. Glazing from the midsection of the tail here, and glazing it down into the bright areas, which I basically painted on patterns of slimy entrails with the Windsor Newton with this colour. So when we put a wash over this and a glaze, it's just going to blend all those parts together. And now, bizarrely, and this really did work, was an Ethonian Camo Shade Wash. It's very, very thin, and I'm being quite strategic in glazing it on, but it's just to give the brass a extra bit of colour, and because I've put Ethonian over that warm red, um, it makes it a bit warmer, but it also tones those metallics a little bit more muted and a little bit more green. So the Herald and his arm don't look like two different things, um, they look like one unified part. As you can see I've carried up that, um, that grey all the way up the front there, but it would have looked a lot better if I'd done the dark grey base first. And then I could have painted more of those um, slime trails on there. And uh, just to start adding more definition to the front because of those greys that I've blended in and they did take a few hours um, was null oil really really watered down and it's not covering everything we're just blending those greys back into those greens and it seems to have give quite a nice slimy looking front to it which you can still see all the shading from the greys underneath now Len Lendam Lendam's grey and Miskatonic grey um, that's a 30-70% mix um, just for the very very tops of the hood which I wasn't really happy with the hood um, you want to see a better combination of purples for the hood uh, go check out the Noxious Blightbringer video that we did um, his robes were done in those colours and I was quite happy with those so I should have used that technique but we're always trying to do different stuff on the channel and use different colours and there you have it guys that's one Herald of Nurgle uh, painted up to a uh, reasonable standard um, not the best thing I've ever painted so I would have changed a few things as I've mentioned along the way and for the base I would have um, well, if it was my model I would have carried that slime on over some grass and then put some layers of gloss satin um, and blended those in so he actually looked like he was dripping down onto the base but as I'm not doing the basing for this model um, there was no need for that extra level of detail so I do hope you like this video guys, uh, it took quite some time to do, so don't forget to hit like, uh, hit share and uh, subscribe as well. We have some special thank yous uh, for those who help support our channel. We have uh, our Patreons, they are DWAC, Warren, Love Minis, The Orc Boys, Joe Spearpoint, Lud Ludwig Hofbauer, Kid Linquist, and Ock Akmus of Dawn. 
you guys are our top paying Patreons, you guys are awesome, you help support the channel, you help us get new models in, and that's absolutely awesome, and we really appreciate that. And we also have an affiliate link down below in the description where you can buy brand new models at a second hand price, go check out the Outpost every time you order something from there, they give us a bit of store credit for the advertisement and uh, it helps get more models and more equipment for the, uh, for the channel, so we can continue to keep making these videos for you guys. And that's all from me, uh, do expect some more demons coming up quite soon and we'll catch you in the next one.